today we're going to talk about the mud flood theory. And mud flood theory is a very interesting topic that has surfaced over the past few years. And it is based mainly off the fact that we have all these buildings and cities all around the world that are just buried in mud. Just fascinating and incredible architecture. And in many cases, things that we just have no idea how they were built. Or at least that we would have a hard time building today, never mind in these ridiculous time periods that we're given. So just a few of many examples. Here we have this old building already looking pretty old in the first picture. And yes, we see water in front of it, but we also see grass and mud through the water and along the building. And the whole thing appears to have been dug out back to its original street level. Here in Virginia, we see this building which appears to be built on a much older stone foundation with bricked in windows and the whole thing looks like it's just been flooded over. This one pretty obvious underground windows, bricked in doorways and it's all just been dug out. Now this one's pretty cool. Uh, notice the pattern on the front of this building and look how deep that is. It's like more than half the building buried. Here we can notice the same horizontal pattern as the front of the last building. Notice the covered windows at the bottom. Looks like a basement doorway going down on the left. And look at the top of the building next to it. You can see the red brick exposed. Looking kind of like this here. As if it was all just covered in this stucco that we see. and. Some areas it's wearing off, but it looks like really old brick buildings behind it. And this is a really cool picture here. Look at the doorway down at the bottom. Looks like that just keeps going deeper. Here we have what looks like covered windows at street level. And maybe this whole building being much like those last few we looked at, except for it's been nicely covered in this blue stucco and decorations. Here we see brick structures and tunnels under the streets of what I'm guessing is Russia. And notice in this one, the small windows at ground level getting bigger as you look to the right. Here's the other side of the same building. Notice the slope. And here, the same view of the same building. Look at the old ground level, the door right in the middle of the building. And it looks like they're just digging it out. Here it is, after all the mud has been removed from the streets. And uh, the old door is now a window halfway up the building. Now this is an interesting spot in St. John, Canada, which is covered in great detail by a channel deciphering the devil's details. I'll leave a link to his channel below. But look at all these windows covered in in a retaining wall. Who puts windows in a retaining wall? You can see the street level up above where the bus is. And look on the right hand side here, the wall comes down into the parking lot as if that whole inside of the parking lot was once the inside of a building. And here we have the same thing, another retaining wall. This is also in St. John. And this one's collapsed. You can see it's an old brick structure, closed off windows, street level up above. And here it is after it's been repaired. They just covered it all up again, of course. So, we've got all these cities just filled with old buildings that have entire stories buried under the ground. Where when we look, we can clearly see where there was previously windows and doors that have since been covered over, and we have simply made new doorways out of old second or third story windows. And these aren't just found in a select few cities. These are found in nearly every major city all over the earth, including North America, where we are taught that everything here is relatively new in comparison to the rest of the world. Yet we can find ruins and anomalous things all over North America. And of course we have the World's Fairs, which involved the deliberate destruction of some incredible old world cities in North America and other parts of the world. But we will get more into that in another video.
And when you start looking into this, it doesn't take long to realize that this is not so much a mud flood theory, but a clear fact with clear evidence. And it quickly becomes more a question of how did this happen? When? Who were these people? Were these natural events, or is this the result of some kind of war and the use of unknown weapons? Was this the wrath of God? And whatever the case may be, why has this been left out of our history books? And then we have the rediscovery of the lost nation of Tartaria, and all this stuff about Antiquitech, free energy, harnessing energy from the atmosphere. And I believe that all these topics kind of go hand in hand to paint the bigger picture of what we're really actually missing here. Now, if you're new to all this, you might be a little confused at this point. That's okay, don't worry. I'm going to try to explain everything to the best of my ability here. So, Tartaria in a nutshell. Of course, there's so much that can be said on Tartaria, and so many different theories to be explored, as nobody really knows the truth about this lost nation. All we can do is theorize as we continue to explore and put the pieces back together. So you might be wondering, well, what is Tartaria? Which brings us to our first red flag. Nobody today has ever heard about it. We are not taught about it in schools, and the little information that is given by the mainstream historical narrative tries to explain it away as a name given for undiscovered or unknown regions. Yet, when we dig into it a little, we find Tartaria to have actually been very thoroughly mapped out, in most cases showing lakes, rivers, towns, and cities, all by name. Here we can even see Oceanus Tartary, the Tartarian Ocean. Who knew? We also find Tartaria mentioned in historical and government documents being described as a country having its own flag, its own people, and really whatever any typical country has. And not only was it clearly a country, but it seems to have even likely played a very significant role in our history, and at one point may have even been the largest country or empire in the world, leaving its mark on every continent through architecture and art, hence the name the Great Tartaria, or Grand Tartary, which we can see on old maps. But then at some point within the past couple hundred years or so, it just suddenly and mysteriously vanishes from history with no explanation as to why and what happened to these people. What's more interesting is that we can actually find evidence of a conscious effort to erase and rewrite history, to intentionally distort and exclude any mention that Tartaria ever existed, and possibly even huge changes to the timeline itself, including the truth about the current year we are in but that is a whole other topic for another video. So why the big secret? What else might they be hiding from this time period? And really, the more we look into it, it seems that these dark ages we are taught about may not have been so dark after all, but in fact quite the opposite. Whereas we are led to believe that through countless wars, our fearless leaders have ushered us into a golden age of technology and peak human intelligence like never before. But all we have to do is look around and we see that clearly we are not the first civilized people to use incredible technologies and electrical energy. And in fact it seems as if at some point in the past there was a worldwide civilization much like we have today with much greater building capabilities and perhaps using greater technology than what we use now, including the use of free energy. Could it be that these same wealthy elite power-hungry families and secret societies of today had conspired against, destroyed, and dismantled this civilization from the inside out in order to gain power over the world? Could all these wars simply be a cover story? an excuse to invade and eliminate people in places that no longer fit the new history? Were the world wars the final stand of Tartaria, paving the way to reset history as we know it and enforce their ways and monopolies on everything, 
thus enslaving, degrading, and devaluing human life to make way for their new world order they keep talking about? Well, what happened to the old world order? I would like to know more about that. Now, looking back to the mud flood and how this all relates is still largely up for debate, as all of this information is still just beginning to surface. But what we can see is that all these buildings and cities we find buried in earth are from a time much different than what we are told, especially considering how we are told that these buildings have been built in more recent times. Yet it does not even make sense that it was even possible for some of these to be constructed given the populations of these cities, the technology and resources available, and the events that were said to take place at the time. Yet these buildings have already been flooded and buried as far back as we can see, in some cases already appearing old and weathered shortly after their supposed construction. And clearly many resembling what we see as ancient ruins all over the earth, with the appearance of simply having been rediscovered, cleaned up, rebuilt, and reintroduced to the world as new cities. Were these cities simply the remnants of what already existed before the Great Flood? Could this be what remains of this old Tartarian age, or is it maybe a little bit of both? So, now that you have a basic understanding of what this is all about, I encourage you to do some of your own research and see what you can come up with. 